What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Killer Keemstar, and I'm here with... Only use me, bud. This is the Bad Kid Cast, the audio cast that you listen to... While you game. We are available on Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio. This is the first cast that we've done in a while since we announced what we announced. Yeah, that we're uh, we're ending the show soon. Blade's moving back to Seattle. Um, but it's been a while since we did the last show because uh, we went to UMG uh, Nashville. Yes, sir. Quite the event. So uh, explain you what UMG Nashville is to people that don't know what it is. UMG Nashville is like a minor league, if you will, of like MLG Call of Duty events. Um, UMG is uh, just a little bit smaller of an organization. And uh, they run tournaments a little bit different. Like they have um, like uh, pool matches or whatever. And it's basically like where any team can go and win the thing, you know, where like MLG events, you know, you have to go through league and have pro points and you you have to qualify for the event. UMG event uh, events at like Nashville is just like anybody can anybody can go and, and win the thing. But FaZe ended up winning. I ended up predicting the winners. Right. But uh, you yeah. almost didn't make it. <sighs> okay. So before we get into this, uh, my buddy Jeff was in town. And my and Scott's brother, Kyle, was also in town. Okay? Yeah. Kyle didn't leave. He tried to leave, but they sent him back. Long story about transporting his car and just whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyways, so these guys literally plotted against me. He, uh, they wanted to keep on kicking it with me for the time that he was in town and I was going to be in Nashville. So they took me to the bar and I was getting drunk, got annihilated. The, the day we're supposed to leave, like the night we're supposed to leave, like we're supposed to leave and be at the airport at 5 a.m. Uh, they had him out the bar, uh, out to the bar until 4 a.m. And he was just wasted. And I got a call from fucking Kyle or text message. And he's like, yeah, don't take blade to the airport. He's completely belligerent. Uh, he's completely out of control, fucking wasted at the bar. And I'm like, what? We got to get on a flight in like two hours. Like, what are you talking about? Why is he at the bar drunk? <laughs> so I'm fucking pissed. I fucking call Kyle and I'm like, Kyle, listen, you don't understand. Blade has to get on that flight. Like, People donated money to Blade for him to go to UMG Dallas. Like, Yeah, Prodigy actually donated money with the stipulation that I was going to be there and I was going to give an interview for some show that he had. So not just will I be pissed off that you're not going, but like everybody that paid for this trip is going to be pissed off. I'm like, you don't understand. He has to go. So I'm like on the phone with Kyle. I'm on the phone with the bartender telling her to only give you water, right? This is at like 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, fuck. So I hurry up and rush here. I fucking pack up my stuff. I ended up forgetting a bunch of shit that I needed. But anyhow, I pack here. I fucking run down to to um, your house to meet you guys thinking you would leave right away. No, not the fucking case. Fucking they didn't bring you there until like 430. We had to leave your house at like 530 at the or, latest. or like five at the latest Yeah, to get on our flights at six. Fucking you show up and you're not moving. You're like in the passenger seat of Kyle's car. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I told you sober him up, but it just wasn't happening. So me and fucking Kyle just like pulled you out and I just like sober up, sober up, sober up. Before you even showed up there, I started packing your fucking clothes. You didn't pack any fucking clothes. Everyone's telling me they're like, uh, yeah, the drama dude wanted Blade to stay. So he got him wasted. So I want to punch fucking drama in the face. Like, I was so fucking pissed off. But anyhow, long story short, um, I fucking told drama too. I'm like, dude, I want to fucking hit you. Like, what the fuck? Like, there's I, there's like thirteen hundred dollars in this trip. Where you're gonna fuck it up? Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm fucking like I I have my car right, mm-hmm. and I was gonna have Scott drive drop us off at the airport and you know bring us back. Whatever. Scott's gone. I don't know where Scott is. So I didn't want to leave my truck at the airport for the whole fucking weekend. I wanted someone to take us there and bring us back. So I asked Kyle. I'm like, Kyle, you're the, I know you've been drinking a little bit, but you're the most responsible person here. You're a fucking 
you know, war hero, and I know you can drive, will you drive my truck back? You know, I'm going to drive and drop us off. Well, then fucking Josh and fucking uh, drama uh, are like, oh, we want to go too. I'm like, why? No. <laughs> like, you're fucking wasted. I'm trying to get Blade there. They're like, no, we're going too. It's not going to be a big deal. Like, what's the problem if I go? Or no, it was just it was just drama. Yeah. He was like, I want to go. Just I'm going. I'm like, no. Like, what the fuck? Like, you literally try to sabotage this whole thing. We got to try to, like, talk to Blade all the way to the airport so he doesn't get fucked up through TSA. You're not going, drama. You're not fucking going. Yeah. And he's like, there's room. I'm going. Whatever. I didn't know about this. So drama just gets in my car no matter what. Kyle's in the front seat. Fucking get in the car. We're driving. And I'm, like, trying to talk to Blade. I'm like, Blade, listen. I know you're really wasted right now. But mind over matter. We're going to have to go through airport security we have to get you on that plane. Like, you can't fuck up. Like, you got to keep it together. And Blades in the Bay is like, I want fucking Tim Hortons. I want Tim Hortons. So <laughs> I didn't I'm say like, it like that. I yeah, just, you did say it like that. Like, like a it. fucking retard with Down syndrome? Like, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> it was similar to that. Okay. So, anyhow, I'm like, all right, we'll stop and we'll get Tim Hortons. Well, then fucking Kyle turns around and he starts, like, trying to give you, like, airport advice. And. I was in tears because Kyle's like super thorough. Like Kyle's in charge of a bunch of like Marines and stuff. Like he's a fucking, he's a war dude. Right. Yeah. So he's like super thorough with like every single step. So he turns around and Kyle had a few drinks too. He turns around and he goes, blade, blade, look at me, look at me. So blades looking at him. He's like, you need to understand that you have a belt on <laughs> and fucking blades. Like I got a belt. Kyle's like, when you go to the airport, don't walk through the metal detectors. You need to take your belt off and put it in the bin. So I start laughing, right? Because that's like, such a, obviously, like, like why? Just... Why is he telling you this? Right? Like, I, I, I just start laughing. I'm like, what? And he goes, no, 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 no. Keem, shut up. Keem, Keem. He puts his hand in my face. Right? He's like, shh, shh. He's like, blade. Your belt needs to come off. It needs to go in the bin before you walk through. Uh, so I don't I don't know what the fuck that was about. Anyhow, we get our fucking coffee. We end up making it to the airport. Um, I go into this like little smoking section outside blades out there. And, you know, I'm like, mind over matter, mind over matter. And when I went the- through, I fucking professionals fuck. So I give him a little talk, uh, prep talk. And then all of a sudden. This person walks by outside and you're like, hey, how's it going, buddy? And you're like trying to give him five. I'm like, no, that's not what we're doing. So (laughs) no social blade. Then there's a period of 15 minutes where blade just gets in the zone. He knows he's wasted. He knows he's fucked up, but he's got to get through fucking airport security. He's got to. When When it's time to shine, I'll fucking I'll do it. So he's fucking really looking socially awkward as fuck because he's like, holding his lips from saying something like he wants to scream out a bunch of bullshit, (laughs) but he's not going to because he's got to get through the line. So he goes and gets his ticket, right? He doesn't even wait for me. Like I, he, he would like gotten the line before me to go through TSA. I'm like, Holy shit. Like this is going to work. He's actually going to get on. Like the, he's going to pull through. So the line is long as fuck. Right. And every time I pass, because I was like 10 people back and the way the line was, you know how like in the roped lines you go past each other, you know what I yeah, mean? It's Back like a, it's and forth. Like a, it's like a snake. Like, yeah, it's like a snake. Well, I keep seeing Blade, like I keep passing him like five times during this process. And every time I look at him, he just looks nervous as fuck. And he looks like he's holding back something that he wants to scream. <laughs> and I'm like, mind over matter, mind over matter, mind over matter. Finally, we get up to the security, right? And the way it worked out is we ended up being on the same one. So I was like right next to him as we're like taking off our shoes and, and going through TSA, right? So it takes forever for Blade to get his shoes off. Like he's fumbling and then he remembers his belt and then his pants start to fall down. He grabs, grabs them, right? Well, whatever. He gets the shit through and they fucking have to check him for something. So they come over to pat him like, no, 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 <laughs> no. Blade just stays quiet. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He just mums yes and no to the guy. He gets through. So he starts putting on his stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is, might actually work. We might actually <laughs> get him on this flight. Puts on his stuff. I'm walking side by side with him. He's like, come with me to my gate. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'll drop you off your gate. We're walking side by side. We're about 10 feet away from TSA just getting through. And he screams, Nashville, baby. (laughs) And I'm like, no. So the thing is, dude, is I, I was extremely drunk. I was extremely drunk, but I was starting to sober up. But I was still like heavy eyed, knocked out drunk. Right. So when I went through the TSA, like he's saying, I was like, don't say a word, no eye contact, just if they see me and they're probably like, what's wrong with this dude? He's just assume he's just a weirdo, like, but don't assume that he's fucking wasted. Right. And when I finally got through, I was like, victory is ours. Like I finally, whoo. So what was that flight like wasted? Like, did you, were you during your layover? Did you almost miss it? Uh, No. Okay. So the, the flight there, full flight, I'm like, fuck. Right. I'll seat next to a old black couple oh, okay <laughs> so it's the wife on the on the window old black man with like um with like a what is that called a golf shirt so let me guess they asked you a thousand questions no i st- i talked to the black dude for the whole trip from fucking takeoff to landing yeah yeah very well when you, when you said old black couple i've like every old black person i've ever talked to is talkative as fuck yes like, he they was- will he was talkative. He just was talkative. talkative as fuck. Like, uh, so uh, so that kept you occupied. That kept us occupied. Here's the thing: I sat down, and um, he like he can smell the booze on me. Mm-hmm. So, and then I was like, yeah, I'm I'm I went out before. Like the one of the first things I said was like, I'm, I think I'm still drunk from the bar. And he laughed. And then after that, we talked the entire time. And the thing was, is like, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, Blade was better when he was black, this and that, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mingle well with black people. I do. Yeah. I do. So we we just shot it up about sports, about college football, all this stuff for the entire trip. Here's the thing. When you take a flight, there's there's three different types of people you sit next to. The person that will not say a word to you, the person that you will share your life story with, and then a person that's like, uh, hey, move, I got to go to the bathroom, but that's all they'll say to you. Yeah. Those are those are the types of people you get on a plane. Most of the time people just put on their headphones and don't talk to them. Uh I took a flight to California once and there was this girl that sat next to me and she literally did not say a word to me. Right. It was fucking incredibly awkward. Uh when the lady came up uh and like asked for a drink or whatever mm-hmm. and she like didn't acknowledge it, I'm like, uh, would you like a drink? And she looks at the lady and she shook her head no. Like, she refused to say a fucking... It was really creepy. Whenever someone doesn't want to get a drink, I always want them to get a drink. I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like, right. I thought, like, uh, what am I doing wrong? Like, I don't know. Like, she made me feel like a rapist or something. Yeah, like, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know how to explain it. Like, she was just scared. I'm like, Ugh. you know. And then, um, And then the next flight, I don't really remember the next flight. I don't think anything special happened. I think it was short. And then I met Dynasty. Dynasty, the man. So uh, before we get to that, uh, the event was held at the Gaylord Center. That's like literally the name of the hotel. Gaylord Offspring. And uh, like that. one of the greatest hotels I've ever seen. Yeah. Like this amazing. place is fucking. You ever see the movie Biodome? The movie <laughs> Biodome. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't, check it out. But anyhow, it's a fucking like a giant greenhouse, right? Well, that's what this whole hotel was. I mean, fucking massive. This hotel is so huge. I was telling one of the guys that works at UMG, I'm like, uh, this place is so big, you can't even use a waterfall as a landmark because there's like 15 waterfalls. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Like, uh, you know, there's a fucking golf course there, too. Is there really? Yeah. Inside? Here's the thing. I was trying to show someone because I can't explain it. So I tried to show someone. So I looked up. Ops, it's called Gaylord Opsbury, Nashville, Tennessee, right? So we're going through the pictures, and in the pictures, they show this fucking golf course that's that's behind it. That's insane. Yeah, but anyhow, inside this thing, you gotta you gotta understand that there's like there's fish and there's bridges and there's waterfalls. Probably twenty restaurants. There's fucking palm trees everywhere. Like this is in Nashville, right? But it's like, all like a, inside, like it's, a botanical garden. It's a giant greenhouse, like, but it's not one section. There's like multiple sections, like in in the 
in the entrance, there's like restaurants and bridges and fucking fish and a fucking giant waterfall. Then you go into the next room and there's like second story, um, fucking giant waterfalls, little paths, like underneath the waterfall, behind the waterfall, a, yeah. a different waterfall, like gazebos, like all this crazy shit. Then you go into the next one and then there's like a fucking river around restaurants and stuff where a boat is like floating through giant waterfalls again, like just a, a fucking crazy spectacle of fucking lights and fucking plants and waterfalls, bridges, restaurants. It's insane. When you check into the hotel, right? So we're checking in the hotel and the guy's like, let me show you where your room is. Dynasty's like right on. So we start kind of walking, think that it's just like, you know, take a left or whatever. This dude pulls out a fucking treasure map. It's a map they give everyone there. Yeah. And it's like, this is what you do. You walk around to this first waterfall, go down a level. Then when you go there, you're going to see some magical, majestic thing. And you're going to go up the stairs that way and take a left. When you get there, like he told us like 15 fucking steps. If you were to walk into the beginning of the entrance of the place and your mission was to just go to the UMG event, it would take you 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of walking just to get from the entrance of the hotel to where the event was, which I've was, never walked so much in my life. Dude, you just it's 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 insane. We had to have walked about 15 miles every day. Yeah, because just like when you're at these events and stuff like you're seeing people on the Internet that, you know, in real life that you want to hang out with, you want to chill with. So you're going from like hotel to hotel to party to party, right? It just you it, you're doing it's, an it, incredible it, amount of walking. It's like, oh, what what are you in? You in uh six three zero zero five six? Okay, I'll be there. Fucking, you might walk for it. Might take you ten fifteen minutes to walk there from your hotel room. Like when we would get Ubers, we would take taxis. We'd have them like drop us off at different sections of the building. Yeah. So it would be like half the time of walking. So much walking, dude. Isn't it? I mean, it was it's good. Uh, it hurt. I, yeah. Like the net, like the net every day afterwards, like my legs were killing me, dude. So, uh, I think the first night we were there or the first day we were there, we got some fucking beer pong in. Yes. We played some beer pong. We schooled some people. Huh? Take a break. And we'll be right back after this. And we're back. All right. So the first night we, uh, played uh beer pong with some, uh, with some streamers. And uh, it was awesome. We were fucking running the table, kicking ass. When they so they're like, "Yo, we got beer pong." I'm like, "Okay," thinking like, "How's this gonna work?" They brought a table. They actually brought a table with them, set it up, had a bunch of booze. We brought a um, a thing of Jaeger to the situation. Yeah, and uh, we ran the table. Um, but then we like wanted to go to the event, so we kind of went into the event a little drunk, um, which was a good time. Um, and then we like pieced out, I think. And then like later that night we went to go play beer pong again and, uh, somebody stole our bottle of Jaeger. Yeah. And, uh, someone from UMG was like, uh, cause apparently I was upset that someone stole a bottle of Jaeger. Oh, so let me squash this real quick. Um, on the last vid, uh, the last podcast we did, I fucking ranted on UMG. I was like, fuck UMG. How dare they not respect drama or respect me, blah, 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 because they want to give me a media pass. Mm -hmm. Well, they ended up giving me a media pass, and I ended up talking to the guy that I had an issue with, the Chris guy, the UMG Chris guy. And apparently he said that he was upset because I ran a story about uh, Fizzerp because Fizzerp was saying that the UMG site was hacked. Um, UMG Chris knew that it wasn't hacked, and he was mad that, you know, I didn't ask or request a statement from UMG the way I covered it. So communication's key. We talked. We squashed it. Everything's cool between... I believe everything's cool between me and UMG Chris. And I believe that because when I was telling him the story about this team that stole our bottle of Jaeger, he said he was going to disqualify them <laughs> from the event for stealing our Jaeger. So I'm pretty sure me and UMG Chris are, are cool now. Okay, so obviously got... I, I got really, really wasted, was mad about uh, the the bottle of Jaeger getting stolen because there's actually two bottles of Jaeger. Right. Okay, there was the one we drank and then the one we started drinking and then it disappeared. 
So I'm on Twitter talking about whoever stole my bottle of Jaeger, you will die. Like I was all pissed off. Uh, I was doing interviews at the event with like companies and I was like, someone stole our bottle of Jaeger last night. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I was telling everyone that someone stole our bottle of Jaeger. So when I came down to the event, the group of people that we were playing beer pong with who apparently kicked everyone out. And they were trying to tell me, they're like, listen, you were cool. Don't worry about it. Sorry we had to kick you out, but we kicked everyone out. I'm like, I don't fucking remember. Like, I don't even, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you're cool. And then they're like this. They go, see those guys that are playing right there? Like on the B squad of the thing? It's like, right. those are the kids that stole your Jaeger. And so I'm like, fuck. Now, I don't think I shared this with you. No. But Dynasty and I figured out that the bottle of Jaeger wasn't stolen. What? Dynasty and I went back to the hotel room after getting kicked out, and he and I just stood there and finished off the bottle of Jaeger. <laughs> but we don't remember that. Like, we ba- barely remember it. Just enough for Dynasty to be like, yeah, that's what happened, because there was two empty bottles of Jaeger in our room. So when these kids are like, those are the kids that stole your Jaeger, we, those are them. Yeah. I'm thinking like, no, they're fucking not. No one stole my Jaeger. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But I had to keep that facade up of, yeah, drama oh, alert. Oh, drama alert. Drama alert. And I thought I told you oh that. Oh, my God. What if UMG Chris actually would have disqualified, disqualified someone? That would be, be horrible. But I'd be, I'd be sitting there like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the. We I, just lost all credibility. Like, the we didn't next lose ev- all credibility. The next event we go to, we're going to be like, uh, somebody stole this. Mm, first, no. first off, I'm already dealing with backlash from the previous UMG event from the Dallas trip. There is this lady that like runs UMG. Like no, 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 no. She's like uh, part of the scene, but she doesn't run it. She, I, I thought but, she was like someone that's like part of but, part of but it. But she it wasn't UMG Dallas. It was MLG Dallas. But anyhow, oh, okay, okay. This woman is like a part of the scene, and the minute me and Blade showed up, because the last event me and Blade were at was in 2013. It was at MLG Dallas at March around the time of March. So it's been about 18 months since we've been yeah. to an event. We show up there, and she goes, uh, like, the very first night we're there, we, like, stopped into the bar. The last five minutes it was open where, like, everybody was at. And she's like, uh, I remember you. You puked on me and pointing at Blade. And then she points at me, and she goes, and I remember you. You said, show me those big tits. <laughs> to to, to Keem, not to me. And I'm like, I did not say that. Yeah, and I didn't puke on you. Like, come on. But anyhow... We got accused of that. Yeah. So, like, and every single time we pass by, she's like, don't puke on me. I'm like, I'm, I didn't puke on you. I'm so. like, okay, big tits. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, th- so that was that. Um, we did a lot of drinking. I mean, we just... Fuck, too much, man. We just drank. And what happened was that that was Friday. And then Saturday is when shit got real fucking crazy. Optic was playing... Uh, we were sitting up in the front row. Okay. I'm like starting all these fucking so, chants and so shit. So Saturday was a really, really good turnout, and there was Optic playing. So when Optic played, the whole fucking place filled up, right? Yeah. Like, oh, Optic's playing, Optic's playing. And so it's Keem and I and Dynasty are sitting in the front row and nothing but kids, right? <laughs> so when you, what happened is one of the photographers got a picture of the entire crowd, and Keem and I are in the front row, and it's UMG's header on their twitter yeah it's they, a pretty epic picture it's a pretty nice picture but me and blade are like in the dead center of the f- and hung over it looks like a fucking um like a yearbook picture of the whole entire class and like we're the two teachers or yeah, some shit yeah because <laughs> nothing but kids and uh so we're, we're up there and we're watching it having a, having a good time watching this and everything like that someone tells us that there's a there's a bar in the event so there's a VIP section, and the VIP section is for people that, you know, purchase the VIP pass. It's for, like, uh, the media people, and it's for, I guess, the gamers, if you will. And they had a fucking bar in there. Now, granted, we're, like, slamming all types of alcohol before we go to this event so we have a nice good buzz going. When I find out that there's a fucking bar in there, I'm just, I, I head over, and it's, like, $10 cash bar only per Jack and Coke. I'm like, yeah. motherfucker, this is expensive. So I just start asking everyone around me. I'm like, uh, who's got money? Like I need more drinks. Right. Yeah. So dynasty throws down like 10, this random kid threw down 10. 
I hurried up and drank those drinks. I had three drinks into me, but I needed more. So I fucking went on a mission to go to the um, ATM to get cash. I get cash. I come back. You were gone at that point. I don't know where the fuck you went. I will, I'll tell you where I went. Okay, go, go ahead. I'll explain it later. But anyhow, I come back, and it's just me and Dynasty. And now I got like $100 on me because I just pulled it out of the ATM. I'm like, uh, look, bro, I need six Jack and Cokes. I'm like, do you have a tray so I can carry these? Because like I was off in the VIP section. I had to get back to my like front row seats, right? So I'm walking through and like people are starting to notice, oh my God, that's Keemstar. So they're shouting me out and it's like, I think optics playing at the time. So like the place is fucking packed and everyone's just fucking looking at me. Right. And I got the fucking guy carrying all these drinks for me over to my seat. So it was kind of like a spectacle, right? So I, I pass a, a, a drink to Dynasty. I pass another drink to um, the guy that loaned me 10 bucks to make squash him. And then I had like three to myself because I think I got five. So I hurry up and slam one. And then I'm double fisting. Well, this girl starts like comes up, wants an autograph, wants a picture or something. And then her and Parasite are like sitting there. And Parasite like took a picture. He was like, call me homeless or whatever. And I'm like, ah, bro, you try to proposed marriage like within two seconds this e-girl that little thing went back and forth drunk having a good time me and destiny start these chants he's like let's go optic bum, 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 bum. we start doing all this crazy stuff we're like fucking chanting out uh go pink wall because the yeah. optic boys had pink on for breast car- cancer, cancer awareness. awareness yeah then the fucking shit happens that is just like i wish it was recorded all of a sudden, some kid behind me in Destiny. All right, we're wasted at this point. Some kid behind us is like, ISIS, ISIS, because we were making all these crazy chants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone thought it was cool to say ISIS. So I turn around, I look at this fuck, and I'm like, uh, what? I'm like, USA, USA. So everyone starts chanting that shit. I look back, and there's this blonde woman, like, in the in the back row, like, yelling and screaming at me. But she's so far back, I can't really hear what she's saying, right? So I just start talking. I'm like, shut up, e-girl. Shut up. Sit the fuck down. And everyone's laughing or whatever. And she, like, stands up and she's yelling. I'm like, why don't you come up here and say that, right? Because we, we had another spot. So as she's coming up. Probably my spot. <laughs> yeah, because you weren't there. As she's coming up to the front row into the VIP section, I pick up the, like, the little string that's, like, or the rope or whatever, if you will, that's like roping off the IP section. I pick it up so she can walk through. And some kid's like, Keem, are you going to take her to your hotel room and fuck her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wasted. And I look at the crowd and I'm like, no. <laughs> right. And then we like, she goes and sits down. And then I turn back and look at the crowd when she's like not looking at me. And I'm like, yes. And the fucking place just starts roaring. <laughs> All right. But. Let me, let me explain this where I was and also a good tip. To no, any- no, 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 no. This story is not over. Oh my this God. story gets way better. Okay. Okay. So we're sitting down there and Destiny's trying his hardest to hook up with this girl, right? And Destiny's like, so what are you doing here? Like, are you a big e-girl? Are you a fan of like optic or whatever? And she goes, uh, I'm here with my son because he's like playing in the event. And we look back and I go, who's your son? And she points to her son and her son is looking at me with like the (laughs) most embarrassing face ever. Like, oh, my God, Keemstar is like trying to mack my mom type of stuff. And I'm like, I felt so fucking bad. Right. Because I wasn't really trying to mack her. Right. Fucking destiny was, though. And uh, so anyhow, we sent the mom back. So where were you? Okay, I want to I want to say something about that. Okay, you guys, a lot of you guys are are young kids. You're like fourteen up, whatever. Some of you are older, but a lot of you guys are, are youngsters. You guys are in your teens, right? So you have to think if your mom had you earlier, and we run into your mom, there is a possibility that we could bang your mom. <laughs> I know it sounds fucked up, but and I know there's like a huge age gap, this place and that place or whatever. But that is a possibility. Now. Before I went to the event, I not get, me. I won't fuck any of your moms. I promise. Okay, I might. Good guy, Keem. I, I I probably would, but um, anyways, there is this uh this gentleman. His name's Nick. I'm not gonna give his last name out. And he hits me up about a week before going to Nashville, and he's like, 
man, I want to hang out with you. Bring a bottle of Jaeger. Let's kick it. I'm like, okay, sounds good. First off, let me give you advice, people, okay? A lot of times when we're walking, like we did a ton of walking there, right? We would be walking and people would be like, oh my God, that's Blade. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And then like n- avoid eye contact and keep walking. That's Keemstar. That's Keemstar. Oh my God. Some of you guys are like, Keem, Blade, what's up? Hey, can you sign something cool? Hey, good to meet you, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, this one gentleman who was probably about 20, 21, um, he was like, came up, was like, just want to say, man, I'm a huge fan. Uh, it's really good to meet you. And I had just ha- dealt with like 50 people that were too shy to say hi. And I'm like, dude, you want to come with us? We're about to go play beer pong. So this dude went with us, got pretty drunk randomly at like early in the morning <laughs> and hung out with me. Like, yeah. Hung out with me, hung out with Keem, hung out with everybody. Right. And I could tell he was a little bit. I can't believe the this Lupo is- guy. Is it? Uh, there was a guy called Lupo. I don't remember. You know, you, you know what you called him? You called him uh, like a Star Wars name. Yoda. Yeah, you called him Yoda. Yoda. Yeah. So yeah, but he was pretty cool. No, he was, he was cool as shit. So like, if you're ever in a situation where you see us at like an event or something like that, and you're cool, come hang out. We'll do whatever. They don't. Do, they're they're nervous. They're scared. You know, I get it. Anyway, so this this person named Nick though, this guy, this guy hit me up about a week before Nashville, saying, "Hey, let's let's kick it." We had no what uh, we had gone. I'd gone. We'd gone drinking the night before. I felt like shit. Like I really went way too hard that that night. And he's text. He's tweeting me. He's like, "Dude, I got the fucking bottle of Jaeger. I got the Red Bulls. I'm gonna get off work in a couple hours and I'll come through." I'm like, "Dude, I don't know if I'm fucking ready for this." So, this is Saturday night, right? I believe it was Saturday. Yeah. So this dude, yeah, it was Saturday because this dude. Uh, came to the hotel, picked me up. We went to the liquor store because some people gave me some money for some booze. And so we bought a bunch of booze and he even bought another bottle. So yep. now we have like four or five bottles of booze. Come back, go to the room real quick. I'm like, hey, I got to go to the room real quick. We'll put the stuff on ice and then we'll go to the event, you know? So we do that. But when we go there, we have like four Jaeger bombs in, in the span of like five minutes in the hotel room. <laughs> He's like, you're trying to get it? Yep, let's get it. Okay, good. Let's that's where you were Saturday night? That's where I was Saturday night. Then we went back to the event and hung out with you, and that's yeah. when you guys were drinking and stuff like that. Well, later on, we were going to different hotel room parties and this and that, that I couldn't put all the booze in any bag that I had. So I had to take my my luggage. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to get everything out of my luggage and put all the booze in a fucking lug in my luggage, and it, first off, it wasn't my luggage; it was Scott Ken Martin's luggage. Saturday night was really foggy, but at some point, Blade disappeared. There were some some fucking parties and stuff that we were into, and at one point, I had the luggage. At another point, Destiny had the luggage, and the luggage just ended up disappearing. Yeah, and here's the thing: um, I didn't want to pay the fifty bucks to have my big briefcase. So I borrowed Scott's briefcase that's just small enough to be considered carry-on, right? So now I fucking lost this thing. And this is like some special luggage, So too. we're thinking somebody stole this shit. Come to find out, uh, one of the guys just brought it over to his room because he knew we left it. That's awesome. And, you know, that's the thing that no, I... not after my room. They, they left it in the suite. Yeah, they brought it up to the suite. Yeah. So... What I've learned every time that I've went to one of these gaming events is that, for the most part, these gamers involved in esports and and the companies and the team owners and the fans involved in esports are fucking cool people. Yeah. Like, I I can't say, like, um, you know, fuck these guys. Like, they're they're criminals or any, like, you know. Can I tell tell the Nade Shot story? What Nade Shot story? Okay. So every six months, I unfollow like 95% of the people on my Twitter and then start refollowing people, okay? It's like, I call it a Twitter purge because a lot of times I follow people for backy cast sponsorships, random stuff, whatever. Clean up my timeline. I just unfollow a shit ton of people except for like the people that if I'm in your neighborhood, I can stay at your house. I'm not going to unfollow you. I'm not going to unfollow you, Keem. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not going to follow like a best friend or like Hex or something or Grizz, like but I unfollow a lot of people, right? So we're at Fuse. We're standing in a circle. It's me, Duncan, Nade, Hex, all these guys, right? And in the middle, like, Hex says something. Everyone laughs. And it's like good laughter. Everyone thinks it's pretty funny. In the middle of this, Nate Shot goes, hey, 
I got a question for you, Blade. And I'm like, shoot, what's up? He's like, why did you unfollow me? <laughs> and I'm like shook. I'm like, uh, what? I didn't know I did. Like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude. Like, I grew up watching you, and you unfollowed me. So I like, I immediately unfollowed you, and I just, I, I just, it always, it, it just, why? <laughs> and I'm like already drunk. I'm like, uh, tell you the truth, dude. I don't know. Like, I know now because I thought about it. Like, literally, I'm like, why would he bring this up? That seems like a really weird thing. <laughs> and he's, Nate is cool as fuck. He's a chill fucking dude. Like, he's a good dude. Oh, yeah. So, that's what perplexed me even more for him to go, hey, man, why'd you unfollow me? <laughs> uh, when I first uh, met Nade, uh, I think it was Scumpy and someone else that was sitting at the table or whatever at Fuse. Mm-hmm. Like the first night we were there, like I've obviously met all these people before, but um, they were like, Keem, and I'm like shaking their hands and I'm like exposed, exposed, exposed. Right. They looked at me like, is he for real? <laughs> right. Like I was clearly joking. Right, right. And multiple <laughs> times I would be hanging out and people would be like, uh, don't put that on drum alert. Like, dude, people, please understand like fucking what's private is private. I only cover stuff. That's yeah. like publicly out there. Motherfuckers should know me by now. I've hung out with a bunch of people. Right. Come on now. <laughs> I ain't out there exposing your personal lives. Yeah. But yeah, a couple times over the weekend, like Hack stopped me. He's like, uh, don't report this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on now. But um, I will say this. Uh, I don't think I ever met Proofy. Well, I... I I, I've seen Proofy before in real life at the 2013 Dallas. He was play, playing for uh, Envy at the time, but I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Like, I got a chance to like actually talk to Proofy. That dude's a cool fucking dude. Another dude that I got to uh, talk to a little bit and hang out with a little bit is uh, Burns Off, the dude from Curse. That dude's a cool motherfucker. Yep. Um, Gucci. Uh, I'm trying to think of anyone else that I like got to hang out with for for a minute um that i haven't before uh fucking um scump yeah scump this was the first time i met him uh actually i've never met him before but yeah chill as fuck so you know um i I love these events and um, they wear you out though man it's surprising um how fucking cool everyone is can i can i just say though that um a umg or an mlg event is is different than like a PAX. Oh yeah, or, way different. Or an E3. The reason why I say that is because um, at a PAX or any kind of gaming event or, or whatever, uh, I'm well known. I'm not trying to be cocky, but I'm well known. Okay, people knew me there, but the pro the pro scene has no clue who the fuck I am for the yeah. most part, except except for Hex and except for like Hastro and the older dudes. They have no fucking clue who I am. I was the dude that was hanging out with Keem, and they were like, hey, wh- you know, who, who are you, or this and that, and I'm, I tell them, like, it's kind of odd when I'm like, um, bl- they, like, you a lot of times, like, that's Blade, and like, only use me Blade, this and that, and they have fucking no clue who the fuck I am. <laughs> but we go to E3 or PAX like that, it's like, we, it's all YouTubers, we know everyone. You know? Yeah. I, I'm lucky, I get the best of uh, both worlds. I took a fucking retarded amount of pictures and, and, and signatures and shit. It was kind of crazy for a minute. I didn't think I was going to be oh, able to get in my kid. seat. So this little kid, right? He's getting. He has an optic hat, and he's getting signatures of every fucking like pro player and person that he meets there, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and the kid let me sit there. So I'm like, I'm not trying to be cocky, but do you know who I am? He's like, No. I'm like, Okay, just leave it at that. I just figured that he gave <laughs> me. The, I figured he gave me the seat because he knew who I was, right? So, um, kid had never heard of me before, right? And uh, then there was a kid that was sitting in front of me, and he's like, uh, holy shit, Blade, that's awesome that you're here. I can't believe this. Can you sign my shirt? And so he gives me a pen to sign his shirt or whatever. And then this little kid's like, oh, okay, well, let me get your signature then. I'm like, nope. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> like, you don't know who I am. Now you just want a signature? Like, what are you, collecting signatures? Get out of here. What are you, is it a petition? <laughs> is it a petition? I know, but then the kids in front were like, uh, yeah, you don't know who he is. Why would you want a signature? You, you know, know what I like about esports, though, is like um, 
if you go to like a PAX and stuff, like YouTubers seem to be very clicky, right? Oh like my god! Every if you're talking about YouTubers and gaming entertainment, like everyone's in their little group and their little alliances, yeah. and it just you know here Extremely on call, clicky on Call of Duty esports, uh, these guys might be all on different teams, but they're all homies. Like yeah. they're all one big group that hang out with each other. Everybody's included. Like I didn't see anyone being like when excluded. we went to one of the hotel parties, there was a good like sixty people in the hotel room. Yeah, yeah, like everyone was there, literally everyone. It's not like uh you know fuck eg like they're they can't chill at, at the at the party right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's not like that, and I fucking love that, and I re- I respect these fucking pro players so much. How fucking cool and chill they are. Yeah, because y- you do not get that on the YouTuber side of it. YouTubers like, think that they're they're literally competing against other people, and they if you're not in their clique, just stay uh, away. Imagine like Thunder being at a fucking party, right? You'd be like, mm, I fucking hate that guy. Like, mm, like you know what I mean? Like, I don't think Thunder would be like that, but I'm just saying. Like, I'm I'm trying to think. Like, there's just so much hostility between YouTubers, which is funny because literally, esports people compete against each other for money, but they're cool with each other. But you know what? This is the beauty of it. Those motherfuckers are smart. They understand the big picture. They all understand that they're all in it to grow the sport. Like yeah. they understand like, look, bro, we might be facing off here and you know, the winner is going to get fucking 10,000 more dollars than the other person. Okay, I'm not But tr- at the end of the day, we're building this sport together. They get that. Like you don't see that in fucking like YouTube. Like hey, you what's 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 the the really 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 fit dude from Phase? Is it Sensor? Yeah, Sensor. Okay, man. I'm not trying to clown. I'm a fat dude, so congratulations on your fitness. That is amazing. Uh, you make a motherfucker want to go to the gym. But can we buy this guy a shirt that fits? Because <laughs> this dude wears a Phase jersey with the sleeves cut off that looks like five times too small. You can see his pectoral muscles in the fucking shirt. That's the point of it. That's, That's the point insane, of it. insane, though. Why is he wearing a normal shirt? Because he's trying to promote fitness. Yo, Sensor is like... was he's, my cool, ma- he's cool as shit. He's cool as shit. That was my guy. That's who played for me on Thrust. He for- played for you on Thrust? Yeah, that's my main guy. Oh. Okay. He's cool as shit. Just stop buying shirts at the Baby Gap. Like, goddamn. But that's why... Because he's got the fucking muscles. That's why. That's why he's doing it. But I'm trying to think of... This. Is there more stories... I'm trying to um, brainstorm, man. I mean, the uh, uh, the buddy coming through and we drank a bunch. It was I, I know this is bad, but it was a lot of drinking. It was just drinking. It was a lot of drinking. So then uh, Monday came around. And people don't know. Here's the thing, man. A lot of these kids don't know how to drink. When I say kids, I'm talking about young kids, like 21 and up. <laughs> they don't know how to drink, though. And it's very it's very. It's awkward. because they're 21, dude. I know, man, but I don't know. And to tell you the truth, you know, I, I did not spend any money at the bars while I was there. I did. Yeah. <laughs> why that? Why is that funny? I bought you drinks, bitch. You owe me a drink. No, but I... But I, da, I da, okay, da, okay, da, okay. Da, what about da. the bottle of Southern Comfort that I lost when you're, when you're walking around fucking drinking out of the bottle and giving it to people wasted? That I didn't see any of that. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then I don't know what you're talking about when you bought me a drink. So I think we could pretty much <laughs> wrap up... I think we could pretty much wrap up the cast, but before we do, I want to talk about how I got home because it's fucking insane. So I hit up Dylan because Dylan's in town. Now, I was supposed to fly helicopters over Nashville over the event the whole time. Like, that's what I was going to do. That was the plan. The problem that I ran into is that the fucking weather was shitty the whole time we were there. Right. It didn't matter for us because we were in the biodome. Yep. Like, we were walking around with sunshine and fucking palm trees, waterfalls. Dude, every hotel I want to go to, convention thing, I want it, I want to be in, I want it to be that. Yes. I yes. want it to be that. Look up Offspree, um... Gay, Gaylord, just look up Gaylord, Nashville, Tennessee. Just look at Gaylord, Nashville, Tennessee, and check it out. But anyhow, uh, Dylan g- showed up the last day, and I'm like, Dylan, um, we, like, I want to fucking go right now. Is there any way we can take the helicopter from Nashville all the way to Buffalo? So he starts like punching, and he's like, "Well, it's going to be about five thousand dollars in gas." So I'm like, "We're seriously contemplating doing it, right?" <laughs> anyhow, a storm starts rolling in, and we're like, "Uh." We better just get you to the airport to make your commercial flight. So 
I was leaving one airport in Nashville on a helicopter to go to the official airport on a like a com- to on a commercial flight to get on a commercial flight. But I was on a helicopter, right? Yeah. So we get in the fucking helicopter. We leave this little airport to head to the big airport, and dude, the storm starts coming in. And I'm in the helicopter, and this fucking helicopter has no doors on it. <laughs> so I'm thousands of feet up in the sky. The wind is blowing. I had to bring my fucking my suitcase with me. My suitcase is huge. It's in the other seat. It's like barely strapped. In. It's wobbling all over the place. The fucking helicopter is like swinging back and forth. The storm rolls through. The wind's blowing. It was the scariest fucking thing ever. Dylan finally lands over at the big airport, right? Guy comes and picks me up in a shuttle. He's like, where are you going? I'm like, U.S. Airways, whatever. And he's like, uh, so why are you riding a, a helicopter? So I explain the story. And he's like, what do you do for a living? So I tell him what I do. And he's like, oh, yeah, I stream on Twitch. And he's like, do you know Tin the Tail Man or whatever? Tin the Tap Man, yeah. Yeah. Do you know that guy? I'm like, yeah, I know him. I think he follows me on Twitter or whatever. And, uh, yeah, it was just fucking crazy. So uh, storm rolls in. I barely, like, make my flight. And uh, I got home. But it was a fucking amazing weekend. The trip three. I almost died in that fucking helicopter. There's so many more stories I want to tell, but I, I can't, can't. I can't recall. Them. I can't tell names. Oh yeah, we don't tell names. We don't tell. Can't names. tell names. <laughs> Fuck. We would burn so many bridges. It's a whole fucking. I'm not burning any fucking bridge. That's what I'm saying. If we name names, I don't. Motherfucker we... wouldn't burn my bridge. I ain't gonna burn his. Yeah. Love you. Thank you for listening to the Bad Kid Cast. Peace.